there's a new rule coming to the EV world about uh, batteries, not about range, not about charging, not even subsidies. It's about something most people have never heard of. And some people have, but they maybe don't know that much about it. So the battery passport is a very big deal. And a good thing and a bad thing depends who you ask. So what does it mean? I'll go through this so we all know the basics about it, at the very least. Starting next year, it'll be mandatory for EVs, uh, every EV battery in Europe, Tesla, BYD, Volkswagen, everyone, to have a, BYD, a battery passport. Why does it matter for you, even if you don't live in Europe? For example, Australia. In this video, I'm gonna break down what the digital battery passport is and why it's been introduced who it affects, what are the benefits, the pros and cons, and how it could impact EV prices, recycling, second-hand vehicle sales, and even the way batteries are made as well. Hello folks, my name is Ben Alexander. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really appreciate your time. This isn't the kind of story that really gets many headlines. Maybe it's a bit dull or a bit beige, but it is one of the most important things uh, for the next couple of years that we will be dealing with and talking about. So thank you very much as well to the patrons on Patreon, YouTube members. Without you, it's, it's harder to make these videos, let's say it like that. So the first question will be, who is this for? Is this for the government to get more control? And, uh, you know, or is it genuinely needed to keep bad businesses at bay? And I, I think it's actually needed, actually. This is a, about traceability, accountability, and control over what is inside your electric vehicle battery uh, from the lithium mine all the way through to the scrapyard, for example. And it will, to some degree, help us keep the people who make batteries more accountable so they can't do daft things, basically. So first off, what even is it? It's basically a digital ID for every EV battery, even motorbikes as well, scooters and things like that. Like, uh, but it's like a birth certificate, uh, service log, health report. It's all rolled into one QR code that will be on every battery. The full history as well of fast charges or overheating or anything like that. Total kilowatt hours gone through it. That will also be listed as well. It covers everything. Where the raw materials came from, how the battery was made, the CO2 emissions uh, to produce the battery, the battery chemistry, serial number, repairs, software updates, temperature logs, literally everything. How many times it's run dead? You'll be able to scan it like a QR code and pull up the entire history of that battery for the life of that battery. That is the law. So for you and me, it's a marvelous thing, actually. It's very useful. If you're a, a bit of a geek like me, then it's kind of a, a nice thing to be able to look at when you're buying an EV. And also an auction company called Pickles in Brisbane, I think it is, in Australia, uh, they've started to do their own software or sort of a check. So when you buy a car through the auctions with them, you'll get like a really comprehensive check with it because they know that it, you know, it's a big thing, especially when you're buying a car from an auction and it could be a bit ropey, if to say it in a word. I know this is a bit of a, a crap example, but it could also be seen as the same as testing the oil on a dipstick in a car, if it was a petrol car, or checking for when you take the cap off and you look for gunk underneath the valve cover cap to just see if there's a head gasket issue but it's digital it's the same sort of thing and we've been buying blind for the last you know five or ten years so think of it as a kind of vin number for your battery pack except it's live and it updates and it's on the internet effectively and i think that's pretty cool and it will stay with the battery even if it's resold or even if it's recycled and or swapped into another car i think that again is pretty cool it started in august 2024 for industrial batteries it becomes mandatory for all ev batteries by february 2027 that's written into the eu battery regulation so the aim is to improve repair and reuse stop greenwashing uh, for example prove that the battery is actually ethical and low emission track recycled content improve repair and uh, reuse as well. Is Has it got cobalt in it? Has it got nickel? Has it got lithium? How much? Where did it come from? So it's, it's got to be traceable. It also helps regulate safety and recalls as well. It applies to any battery over two kilowatt hours. So it includes uh, e-scooters, hybrid vehicles, vans, you know, utes, small cars, mopeds, anything really. So this is the EU trying to clean up the EV industry, not just the tailpipe emissions, but the entire chain. And I think that's pretty nifty. 
from the Chilean lithium mine to the scrapyard in Poland, I think you could say. So even though some people think that the EU are quite power hungry, maybe you agree, maybe you don't. That's, that's you know, a lot of people do say that in the comments. I literally read it all the time. They're trying to power grab all the time. That's not my job to say. I, I'm perched amply on the fence. Uh, what they're doing here, though, with this, I think is probably most likely a good thing. So what does it mean for EV buyers and the industry and the wider industry? For car makers, it adds more compliance costs, obviously, especially for smaller companies or imports from China and Southeast Asia, especially cheaper cars. You might notice a few hundred dollars extra stuck on there because of the, the stuff they've had to do. Chinese brands like BYD, NIO, Xpeng, uh, they will need an you know EU compliant digital system to operate with. It helps trace CO2 emissions, which will be taxed or regulated in the future. For battery makers, there's a big boost for companies like CATL, Northvolt, LG Energy. I say Northvolt, eh, bit of a ropey thing to say. Who already track the battery data at the cell level, which is nice. For you, the buyer, the second-hand EV market gets more transparent, so you'll be able to see how many fast chargers it's had, what state the battery's in, where it came from, uh, whether it's actually safe to reuse, and uh, whether it's had repairs, it will they'll have AI in them and de detect if it's had a cell repair, for example. It could improve resale value and reduce range anxiety for used EV owners, basically. In the short term, it might make EV slightly more expensive. In the long term, it's a good thing, and it means uh, fewer battery fires, uh, better recycling, and way more trust in used electric cars. And if you're buying a used Tesla, in 2030 you'll probably be scanning its passport before uh, you even ask about the ties i think so even though they aren't formally in the european union uh, switzerland uk norway as well because they pay the same sort of money to the european union they're very likely to adopt uh, the similar laws basically they most likely will the us has uh, similar goals as well in the IRA and uh, especially around tracing the raw materials. Expect probably Australia and Asia Pacific countries to follow by maybe 28, 2029, 2030. If you're into this kind of behind the scenes EV story, how laws uh, affect us and the tech and battery factories all tie together, that sort of stuff, please consider subscribing. I cover stuff that basically most people don't talk about, but also a lot of other stuff, especially with Tesla, BYD, you know, GM, that sort of thing, and also battery tech as well. And if you want to support me on the channel or help me keep the show going, there's a Patreon link below, or you can join on YouTube members. Massive thank you to the list of people who are on the screen. These are the current supporters. Here are their names now. And uh, yeah, thank you very much to loads of people. You know, there's uh, Darren and Gil, loads of people who are always commenting. So thank you very much. I, I read all your comments, obviously. The digital battery passport might not be exciting, might not sound exciting at least, but it is a massive shift in how we treat batteries and EVs. From 2027, every battery will need one in the European Union. And that means you're going to start seeing QR codes and data reports becoming as normal as VIN numbers and a reg plate, for example. That just will happen in the next few years. Over 1.6 million tonnes of lithium-ion batteries are expected to be sold in the European Union by 2030. This is going to affect hundreds of millions of individual battery cells over the next decade, over the next 10 years. And there's no way really to enforce sustainability without digital tracking, in my opinion. EV batteries currently account for about 25 to 40% roughly of an EV's entire life cycle emissions, depending on the vehicle, obviously, and uh, how you treat it, how long you can make it last. For example, a battery made in China using coal power may have a CO2 footprint of 100-ish or 120 kilograms of CO2 per kilowatt hour, while a battery made in Sweden, if you're lucky enough to buy one made in Sweden, uh, using hydropower could be maybe under 50 which is a big difference. That means the same battery with the same range might be twice as dirty depending on where it was made. So this is uh, definitely something to understand a bit better as we move forward in the next five years. By 2031, the European Union will enforce mandatory recycled content in batteries. This is something very few people know about, but they are definitely going to be doing that. So 12% cobalt, 85% lead, 4% lithium, and 4% nickel as well, if I've not missed anything out there. So without a battery passport, you'd have no way of proving 
where the cobalt or lithium came from or whether it is actually recycled in any way. Who is building the battery passport system then? This is an important question again, but very few people know it, I think. The European Union is funding uh, pilot projects through the Battery Pass Consortium, which includes uh, Fraunhofer Institute, which is a very German name, uh, Systemic, with a Q at the end, not a C, BMW, Audi, BASF. Battery passports must use a standardised data format, readable by European Union third parties, must include a serial number, uh, material list, ESG score, health data, usage history, and lots of other things. It's got to be publicly accessible for the battery's lifetime. That is the deal. It's about trust and safety and traceability and accountability, I think. And honestly, it could make buying a used EV less risky. Obviously, that's like the big thing for us as consumers. So let me know what you think of it in the comments. And uh, is this the kind of rule that makes sense to you? Or is it another bit of overreach from the European Union? Please put your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.